I'm going to cover the eight reversals that I think that can be effectively traded with consistency. And the first one we're going to talk about is trading previous day's highs. And what we're doing is, is we're looking for opportunities where the market will blow out the previous high or previous day's high specifically, raid the buy stops, and then reverse and trade lower. There's certain criteria that I like to look for. There are instances that will lead you to seeing opportunities by raiding the previous day's lows, sell stops, and raiding the previous day's high for buy stops. Not every previous day's high or low is is the same in terms of an opportunity, but there's a criteria that I look for when I'm looking at the previous day's high. There's buy stops above that previous day's high. There's banking levels. There's uh, intraday algorithms that go up to those previous day's highs and down to those previous day's lows to seek liquidity that would be resting below or above it, respectively. Knowing the conditions that leads to a raid on the buy stops on the above the previous day's high is one of the gems of this teaching. And conversely, the opposite is seen when we're looking for previous day's lows. Another reversal I like to trade is the intra-week high where the market trades above the highest high it's made for the week so far, raids the buy stops, and then reverses. Now, as I give you these scenarios, I want you to think in terms of those weekly templates I've provided you in earlier months. Those templates, in conjunction with the conditions that we're talking about here, they will unlock. But for intraweek highs, what I like to do is look for scenarios where the market has already been trading, for instance, higher for a period of time, and we have yet to meet a premium array that eventually gets traded up to, say, maybe on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, and it hits that on that particular day, but it also does it on the heels of running out of previous intraweek high. I really like that scenario because traders are going to be looking to have their buy stops above that initial intraweek high. For instance, it could have made a, a high on Tuesday and then trade higher on Wednesday up into a higher time frame premium array. Once that higher time frame premium array is traded to, it's coupled with buy stops that would be resting above, for instance, Tuesday's highs. So traders that would be looking to sell short on Tuesday, because many, many times Tuesday can create a false decline or false high. And then Wednesday will come up here and blow it out. And then that's the high of the week. Okay, ops is obviously seen in the form of an intra-week low where we see the, the lowest low on the week be violated on the downside and the sell stops be rated and the market reverses. Intermediate term highs. Now this is going to be a little bit longer term. Uh, it may be a high of the previous week or a week before it. So it's going back a little bit more in terms of time. And what we would be looking for is a run above an old high basically. And those buy stops that would be resting above that old high, they would be rated and the market reverses. Now, this can be a little bit tricky because the old highs and old buy stops that would be resting there or just above it, you have to look at the, the context of the marketplace at the time. What's the storyline behind why price would be permitted to trade above that intermediate term high? Yes, they're looking to take those buy stops, but there's a storyline behind it. Is it pairing up those orders to go into an exit of longs or is it going up there to engineer liquidity to put people on the wrong side of the marketplace and then go lower? And obviously the reverse would be seen as an intermediate term low. Okay, New York session reversals. Now, when we look at New York session, generally it's a continuation. Uh, the characteristic of New York I like to view first and foremost is it's a continuation generally of what was already established in London. If London was a bullish rallying, making the low of the day, that means I'm going to be in first looking for signs that there's a continuation on that move going higher from New York's open going into London's close. But there are instances where that if London created the low of the day or what would be initial low of the day, it rallies up and goes into New York, but then New York reverses and goes lower and then you end up having a lower close on the day. That occurs when the markets trade into a higher time frame premium array, in this case as I was outlining, or the reverse is seen. If London starts trading lower, creates the high of the day, then New York creates the low of the day, reverses and ends up closing higher on the day and the London close. Everything I just mentioned for New York session reversals applies to London close, but also intraday, obviously on large range days, when we have a five day average daily range that's exceeded, when we get into 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock in the morning, New York time, you can anticipate a London close reversal for an intraday scalp where price will want to come back a certain measure of that range. London close can be a reversal of sorts, just like I outlined for New York, but it also always has the potential to create an intraday scalp. But I like to only do it when the average daily range of the last five days has been exceeded at least one and a quarter to one and a third percent. In other words, if it's 100 pips ADR, I want to see 125 pips or 130 pips like that or more. And then at 10 o'clock going into 11 o'clock, if I see some measure of weakness, you'll learn that there is a measurable and tradable retracement back into the daily range. But I don't like to do that type of trade when the range is smaller than the last five days average daily range or if it wasn't really explosive. The better trades 
are when the market has a real big extrapolation one-sided and it moves a lot real quick. Then in London close, you generally get a lot of profit taking on an intraday basis and you can see some retracement of that total daily range. So when we're focusing for market reversals, we're looking for number one, a clear indication that it wants to go the opposite direction. But let's look at each one of these a little bit more detailed. All right, trading previous days, highs and lows. So generic things like time of day, highs or lows formed in London, the opposite end of the range in London close forms. New York is generally a, a continuation. Rarely will it become a reversal in New York, but times when it reaches its higher time frame PD array, that's when you anticipate that New York session becoming a catalyst for reversal. Well, when we look at previous days, highs and lows, every single trading day, you should always refer to how price traded today after the close in relationship to the previous day's range. Did we work the daily high or the daily low of the previous day or the day prior? Prior to it or the day prior to it. So what you're doing is you're always referring to the last three days, counting today as one day. You'll see that there's a lot of influence over that liquidity that's resting above or below those respective days, highs and lows. Now there's two circumstances that when we're looking to fade the price beyond the previous day's range, there's characteristics, there's things that we look for. And in my opinion, this is the kind of like the crown jewel of this particular teaching. During expansion swings, there are smaller retracements that typically create opportunities where the previous day's low is rated then price rallies higher. In opposing expansion swings, there are retracements that create opportunities where the previous day's high is rated, then price declines. Obviously, it's the concept of turtle soup, which is a false break above an old high or a false break below an old low, but it's one step further than that. Okay, so when we're looking at previous day's highs and lows, when is it that I'm really looking to trade below the previous day's low to be a buyer or above the previous day's high as a seller? But when I'm looking to trade the previous day's low and I'm anticipating higher prices, in this example, you can see price was moving higher as a part of a larger expansion swing. And during a normal retracement lower into a fair value gap, price finds buyers under the previous day's low. Using the previous day's low and anticipating a market reversal after the previous day's low is rated, one can be a buyer intraday. So take a look at this candle right here. This candle is open, trades down, and closes in the fair value gap, and then rallies up and has a higher close. The candle prior to it, it notice it trades down below that candle's low. So you could already be thinking that about being a buyer below that candle's low because the fair value gap exists below it and it's during a retracement. Your understanding of institutional order flow in the higher time frames are going to assist you here because while markets generally retrace those retracements, what you're looking for is a move down below the previous day's low and also into a discount array. Like in this case, it's a fair value gap. Price trades under the previous day's low. That's where you're going to find buyers. The market's going to come in with a great deal of institutional sponsorship and they'll send price higher intraday. Now trading previous day's highs, I like to look for reasons to see price move up into a short-term premium array and then having, and like we see in this example here, price was moving lower as part of a larger expansion swing during a normal retracement higher after a fair value gap was filled. Notice the gap has already been filled, but after that gap has been filled, price finds sellers above a previous day's high. This candle here trades above its previous candle. When price trades above that previous day's high, the market finds sellers and you can be a seller that day trading intraweek highs. Now, in this example, we can see price was trading above equal highs on Thursday of this particular week. Now, price rated the buy stop liquidity pool as a premium array. Now, when we use intraweek highs, and we are basically anticipating a market reversal after the buy stops are rated. When you see this happen in your charts, this is when you can step into the marketplace and be a seller intraday. When we look for equal highs, we know that there is like candy land, as we call it. It's very easy to see that retail is going to have their buy stops resting just above that, and any rate above it, 10 or 20 pips above it, will scoop up those buy stops and in many times banks will go in and sell right into that and that'll give you your day trade as a short but also think in terms of what price may be unfolding in terms of overlapping these reversal concepts see we have a tuesday high and then wednesday had a slightly lower high but it's basically equal highs we know there's going to be buy stops above that so on thursday price rallies above it at that time it could also be seen as a new york reversal so that you're blending a couple different things trading intraweek lows now this in this example we see price was trading below the equal lows on Tuesday of this particular week and price rated the sell stop liquidity pool as a discount array. Now, if you look, I've shown a low that was from the previous week as the double vertical lines, that's a Sunday. Uh, you have equal lows on the previous Friday and on Monday. So those two equal lows are traded down through on Tuesday, violating that old low. So you have an intraweek low that can be blended in with the previous week's range as well, especially if the reversal occurs on a Monday or Tuesday, as we see in this case here.
trading intermediate term highs and lows. All right, in this chart here, you can see price is trading in a large consolidation, and the periods when the market is not trending one direction, they offer ideal conditions. You know, for shorting above an old high and buying below an old low from a previous week or longer in time. So when we look at reference points in terms of classifying as intermediate term, it's beyond just yesterday, and it can be as short term as intraweek or previous month or two months ago. Old lows and old highs like that, they're gold mines because think about who would be having Having their stop losses below or above those reference points. The whales, those large fund traders, when they have their orders in those markets, they're going to be placed around these higher time frame highs and lows. So if the market trades back to them, they're gunning those stops. When the market lacks directional trend and uh, one-sidedness, those conditions, they offer more opportunities to trade like this than not. Once I understood what price was actually doing and the behind the scenes view of what takes place for runs on liquidity, the concept of reversal trading was much more, in my opinion, my cup of tea. I liked it, which is the reason why my London Open strategy became like my repertoire for Forex, because essentially what you're doing is you're looking for reversal patterns every single London session, because the Judas swing, when we're looking for bearish moves, it's going to be rallying higher. What we're doing is trying to time that intraday reversal. So these reversal concepts are large in scale with intermediate based ideas, as I'm describing here, but it also is minute to the point where we can reduce it to the London Open for Judas, the CME open for the New York Judas and Asia. It has its Judas at 8 o'clock and then well, New York time or ZMT, zero GMT. And then you have it also in London close on days that create London close reversals, as we'll talk about. Okay, New York session reversals. Uh, when we look for New York session reversals, obviously the first remind yourself is that the weekly templates that I provided in earlier teachings, this is going to provide you the basis for studying current market structure and then also learning to anticipate what the New York session is going to do in terms of continuation or reversal. Now, while a reversal can occur on any day of the week, we learn that certain weekly templates are more likely to unfold over another. In simple terms, when we see price trade down into a discount array on a higher time frame chart, and it does it at the time New York opens, that is when the most likely chance of a market reversal occurring in New York session is going to be seen. Unless the New York session opens up at a premium array on a higher time frame or discount array on a higher time frame, New York will always be expected to be a continuation of what was seen in London. All right, London close reversals. Now, London close can be used for intraday reversals on large range days uh, for scalps. The large range day that exceeds its five-day average daily range tend to retrace about 20% of its total daily range at 10 o'clock in the morning to noon New York time. In longer term conditions, the London close can time a market reversal that can lead to a series of days of one-sided direction. This is best determined with the use of the weekly templates and study of the current market structure. But there are times when you anticipate the New York session causing the reversal and and then later on, London will go back to that higher time frame PD array and blow out the stops on the New York session, as you see here in this example. So always be mindful that even if you're expecting the New York reversal, London can come back and act like we see many times in London. London open, you expect a high to form, it creates a high, it trades down 30, 40 pips aggressively, and then it comes back one more time, knock those stops out, and then it sells off. Well, when we're expecting New York session reversals, the London close can be that second swipe for those the individuals that are really on the right side of the marketplace and they're buying the reversals in New York or selling the reversals in New York, London Clothes can many times go up there one more time or down there below to knock out those stops for those people that were right anticipating the New York session reversal. So if you see that occur, step right in there again and buy it below the New York low if you're looking for a bullish New York session reversal. If it comes down again in, in London, I'll step right back in there again and buy it again. And then many times you'll get really wicked low pricing and it quickly moves away the other way.